Hey guys, you're watching Square Faced Vision. I'm Jules Hallam and you've joined us at the Electric Brixton in South London. We managed to grab the Jezebels for a little chat. Hello. 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 Yeah, thanks for having I, us. I don't really know why, but whenever I pronounce your name, I want to say it like Borat would say it. Like the Jezebels. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, Do did it, you ever find Jewish, that? Is it a Jewish name? Uh, well, I guess it comes from was it a Hebrew queen, maybe. I'm not sure, but, but I just feel compelled yeah, to say it. I think it's yeah. one of those words that sounds a bit novel or tokenistic or something. <laughs> your first single was called Disco Biscuit Love. Is that right? That was about four years ago, yes. Was that a nod towards your lifestyle at the time? <laughs> <laughs> uh, not really. It was a nod towards a lifestyle that seemed to surround us. Right, not okay. Not necessarily our lifestyle. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, sometimes I hate... Like, if you go out after the show and, like, you say hi to some people at the merch desk, sometimes they're like, oh, can I have a hug? And I'm like, of course you can. That's fantastic. <laughs> like, I really mean that. Thank you. <laughs> you just keep hugging them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting you say that. Do you, do you ever get people who will just stand there and look at you, like, just stare? Because I know, through my experience of meeting bands, I've always been too scared to go up to them and say hello, but because I recognise them, I just end up staring at them <laughs> like a sex pest. Well, usually it's like a glance, but I remember when I was seeing my favourite bands, I'd always walk up to them and make an idiot of myself. Like, we met the guys from The National, oh. and Nick actually talked, I just stood there, like... That was funny, <laughs> that was funny. Oh yeah, <laughs> what, what went down, Nick? Well, the sing I spoke to the singer, the I forget drama? the singer's, singer's name, Matt. Um, Matt. And um, that went pretty well, it was only 30 seconds, because I knew I wanted to get in and out before I said anything shitty. And we went in and I'm like, hey, like, because we were both backstage and just said, I want to say, like, your music means a lot to us. Thank you so much. And we're going to watch your show. It's going to be great. Just thanks. And then get out of there before something shitty happens. Then I saw the drummer, Brian Devendorf, who's like, like, proper inspiration for me as a drummer um, these days. And um, I went up to him and I was like, Hey man, like, ah, uh, yeah, I, I play, I play drums too. So I totally do like that. We play the drum. Piss ball. Ouch. Get out of there. Kevin oh. and I were just watching them. Yeah. Haley, I've yes. got a question for you. Um, oh how do you feel about Chris Brown and Rihanna? Getting back together. Yeah. Well, you know, it's private, so each to their own, but. Pretty crazy. <laughs> I don't know. Um, it's not really any of my business. Well, you wrote a column in Q talking about uh, feminism within music and particularly hip hop, and Chris Brown and Rihanna seem to kind of personify what you were yeah. trying to get at in the article. It's interesting. I guess it depends on like whether you think Rihanna has a a role to be, um, you know, to possibly a role model like whether she should be a bit stronger and possibly not go back with um, a man who beat her. But then it's like, yeah, whether you draw the line, it's kind of her choice. I think you gave a very diplomatic answer to that because I think the fact that Chris Brown has managed to get away with something that is just so wrong on so many levels and now he's back in the limelight being a big star, I think it's completely ridiculous. Yeah. The fact that it's been put together, so they're now working together on a, a track again. Now that's it's just like saying it's okay. And I think if you think of so so many people who follow hip hop will look up to these people for influence, and that's just completely the wrong message that you're sending to so many people. I think. Well, the joke. reason I was diplomatic is I don't know enough about it. I don't know if he was ever tried or went to jail for what he did or anything like that. I don't know the details. Do you know? Um, that's that's a good point, actually. I don't know the specifics. <laughs> yeah, because I think that would make a difference. It's the same, like, yeah, in, in so Australia, there's a big problem with um, the way rugby league players perform, like, um, act off, yeah. off, the, off the field. And, like, a lot of them say they beat up their wife. It's, like, alleged or something like that. And the, the football team won't get rhythm off the team until the court gives its final decision. But I think, like, if you use that as an example, I think it's important to, yeah, because these people are, like, Someone like Rihanna, I think, as you said, she has such a massive like position in the cultural world. And I think I don't know, but it's it's you can't say anything about that because it is like this complex issue. It's totally yeah. complex. If you want to talk about like the the responsibility of artists to be up to society standards, do they have that responsibility, or are they just people that happen to sell a product that a lot of people like? Yeah. You also don't know how much of it's an act. 
you know, mm. how how much they're in the media now because they're back together. So basically what you're saying, it's impossible to know the specifics of yeah, the situation. Yeah, and therefore it's so impossible to, make a judgment to judge. Is... It's kind of like, this is a surreal world, these pop stars live in. Yeah, well, I'm no feeling, I'm feeling pretty good now about my rant that I had I about five minutes ago. I'm glad you brought me down. On one level you're right. On one level you're right. But If you take it at face value, then it's pretty easy to get angry at it, I think. I mean, like this man beats this woman and then he doesn't as far as the public can tell, as far as the media puts it forward, have any much repercussion from those actions. I mean, you know, when you write it down on a piece of paper in five steps, that looks yeah. awful, but then, mm. but then it's just always so much more. I get the feeling you're, I want to say anti-pop, that's maybe not the right way to describe yeah, yeah. it, but hmm. I, I feel that you guys would shun the spotlight to do what you want to do. I think we're too awkward with the spotlight to be shone in our direction. It's strange. No, you guys it's completely kind of strange for right us now. because Australia has the the music scene in Australia is very underground compared to a lot of compared to England and America. Like it's really alternative and and especially with um, radio stations like Triple J, they really support alternative music and lots of different types. And um, there isn't sort of a huge mainstream really. I think that it's funny that you say we're anti-pop because I think a lot of people would think we're too poppy. Like, we sort of sit on this thing where indie kids think we're too mainstream and mainstream people haven't heard of us. <laughs> so it's like... <coughs> so you've got basically no one listening to you. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, shit, yeah, man. That's, yeah, that's terrible. I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> I was listening to you just yesterday, you know. Maybe I'm your only and biggest fan. <laughs> Has anything, anyone ever said to you you're like the indie abba? <laughs> no, at any point down the line. We ha where did you get that idea? Well, I, when I was researching you, I just thought, okay, so they're quite alternative, but it's two guys and two girls. Oh yeah. Yeah, we've got a bit of a pairing here. Or another one was Wild Beasts meets Florence and the Machine. Don't mm -hmm. know. That's a good one. Yeah, I love Abba. So. Yeah. Oh right, okay. No so one we'll has ever actually picked up the influence at all. Right. <laughs> I think it's, I think it's more maybe the influence is more in there. Lesser well known song. Yeah, mm. true. Or something. True. Fernando. Like Haley's just shown me a bit of Abba and the ones that, that you like, and I think they're such beautiful songs, some of them. But they're not Re like really different. Thing. Yeah, they're different to the, the really. Singles. Yeah. Well, guys, look, it's been, uh, it's been great uh, cool. chatting with you this Thank afternoon, you. and well, best luck with the tour. And well, I give you the indie Abba. The Jezebels. The Jezebels. <laughs> <laughs> the Jezebels. <laughs>